Thank you very much for coming to the event. My name is Ming Lu Chen. I am an academic staff member of the Department of Government and International Relations at the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. I have been invited by Kate, who um, has very kindly asked me to be here today to share my experiences of turning my own thesis into a book. Um, after I speak, I think Kate will also um, introduce to you some information related to um, copyright policy um, about publishing materials. Um, so as to me, I'm not actually a early career researcher anymore. I hate to say this, but <laughs> I published my thesis into a book a while ago. That was um, about six years ago. Um, so I, I guess somehow everyone's situation might be different. Also, our disciplines might be different. So every discipline um, and also um, every um, university, they have different expectations. So I'm not sure how much my experiences can be generalized, but I would try to share um, the kind of useful information and tips that I can think of with you. And I will speak briefly. I, I try not to take too much um, of your time. So I think, as I said, I think different disciplines probably have very different expectations. In social sciences, I think we are still expected to publish um, monographs, but I know some disciplines no longer expect this from the researchers. Um, I don't know what is your disciplinary background. Are you from the um, the, the STEM um, disciplines? Are you all social scientists like myself or from humanities? So well, in that case, I guess um, we probably still are expected at some stage of our career by our um, employer to publish monographs. Although I think journal articles nowadays probably also uh, is are valued, um, if not more, but quite equally significantly. Also, I think different employers would have different expectations. Why am I saying this is because I just had a conversation with a colleague of mine who is a um, human geographer. And he told me that he works in Hong Kong. And he says his university in Hong Kong, they don't actually give credits to books anymore. Um, so nowadays, apparently, as well, like journal articles for many disciplines and also for some universities, they are um, becoming more um, more valuable in certain ways. So I have a few tips here. Um, when I was writing, last week, Kate was asking me, how did you turn your thesis into a book? Did you have too much, a lot that you had to change? Actually, I didn't because my, um, I was very lucky because my supervisor um, for my uh, PhD, he is a very well-established scholar and he has profound experiences of getting his research output published. So I guess from the start of my PhD candidature, now I can um, recall that he kind of encouraged me to structure the whole um, thesis, not in a rigid way as a thesis. So this is my uh, literature review. This is my theoretical framework. I didn't even have this kind of titles or subtitles. I kind of just, um, although I had all this information um, included, I kind of structured my thesis encouraged by him in a way like a book. So although later on when I had to go back and revise my um, thesis into a manuscript to submit to the publisher, 
I think that has saved me a lot of trouble kind of working on the structure, although I had to do changes such as you shouldn't have the word thesis in the manuscript, but now I think the uh, word um, can change it for us automatically, which is really good. Um, my other tip would be to probably the, the examination process can be very, very painful, but I also think this could be the first step towards turning your work into a more mature, um, more mature piece. Um, quite often, examiners, I think, when they come back to you in their review reports, quite often they would make recommendations such as, should you want to turn this uh, piece of work into a book that I would suggest you to do this and that. So I think this is actually a really good process for you to kind of start revising or rethinking about your thesis from a different perspective. Um, then, um, so also to kind of have this mindset, probably the revision period, revision and resubmission process wouldn't be so annoying and painful anymore, right? This is the first step towards getting your thesis published, which I think is actually quite helpful. Um, me, myself, I finished my thesis in 2007, then I just got so um, fed up with looking at this same topic over all these years. So I took two years off, just basically doing not much. Um, I kind of got out of academia, I spent a year back in China, then I traveled in Mexico for a year. Then it, after two years, I re-entered academia. Then my next big task was, okay, now I have to turn my thesis into a book. But now I have already lost the film. So I guess don't lose, uh, leave it for too long. That would be the next tip I have for you. But then I guess um, if you just keep working on the thesis without a break, that could be also a little bit annoying, right? You just get bored and you can, after working on the same topic for such a long time, you just lose your perspective. You probably wouldn't even know like what parts would need to be um, changed or strengthened. But then uh, if you take a too long a break, like what I did, I just lost the motivation. It took me quite a while to actually finally go back to this, um, to this mood again. Um, but then here, I guess, mm, if, if we probably will have to be a bit strategic these days about when we want to get our thesis published. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because now as a, um, uh, academic staff member, looking back at the process, I'm thinking, actually seeing my colleagues who kind of went through the same process at about the same time, their experiences can be quite different. I know some um, colleagues who later on went to um, North America to take up um, teaching positions I, their strategies were very different from mine. Right? They didn't get their thesis published immediately. They waited until they secured their first um, uh, job contract. Then from their first job, they started working on the thesis to turn it into a monograph. But I guess that has something to do with the tenure track system that um, North America has that we don't have it here, so it probably wouldn't be too much an issue. And also nowadays, in order to be competitive, um, applying for those university level postdoc fellowships, quite the minimum, um, absolute minimum coating my um, uh, protein is to have at least one book. So I guess depends on where you plan to go, who will be your potential, employer and also your disciplinary background, the strategies, um, 
I mean, it, this can be a very strategic issue. Um, I don't think I'll be able to offer very detailed um, advice, but I guess the supervisors would be always um, good people to ask. Also senior colleagues in the department who could probably offer really good mentoring through this process. So I think I'll just stop here because it's a short session and I'll leave the floor to Kate. If you have questions, I'm happy to ask, uh, answer them later. Thank you, Ming Lu. Um, I'm, I'm Kate Stanton, and I'm the Copyright and Information Policy Manager in the University Library. And I really like Ming Lu's tips, though. That's really clear there. That's really clean. Um, write your thesis like a book. Take the thesis examination process as your first editorial step. And don't lose your motivation. And I would add to that, don't lose your motivation when you get to the rights management piece, because it can be complicated. So what I'm going to talk to you about is some of the, uh, not the strategy, but some of the mechanics. So I'm going to follow up with some considerations for when you're publishing your thesis as a book, or when you're publishing anything, really, um, if you're doing a thesis with publication, or if you're publishing your first journal articles. All of these things, um, principles will still apply. Now. This is a quick talk. It's not a training session on copyright, but I am going to frame up a definition to make sure we're all on the same page. So, very briefly, copyright is a bunch of rights in creative works. These are granted exclusively to the copyright owner to reproduce or communicate the material, and in some cases, the right to perform or to show a work to the public. So a copyright owner can prevent another person or another entity from reproducing or communicating their work without permission, or they might choose to sell or license the work to someone else, which is most likely what you'll do when you publish. It's really important to understand that copyright doesn't protect your ideas, only the expression of an idea. So it won't protect your idea for a book, so keep that one to yourself but it will protect your thesis manuscript, your completed thesis, or your book manuscript at all stages in the process. And also, um, especially important for our international students, in Australia, copyright protection is automatic. There is absolutely no need to register. There is no legal requirement to publish or to put a copyright notice on something. Copyright protection works as soon as the work is put in material form under our legal framework. So that means being written down, even on a post-it, even on a, in a notepad, or recorded in some way. So that's the basics in 90 seconds. Let's move on and talk about books. So when you're converting your thesis into a book, it's very important to consider the copyright implications, including the rights that you have retained to reuse your published articles or book chapters in your thesis and then later in your manuscript. So that's if you're undertaking a thesis with publication, which is becoming more and more common at this university. You need to consider the rights that you've obtained to reuse third-party copyright material in your thesis. Uh, say you've included images from an artist, um, ethnographic images from another source, or tables or figures from other sources. And you also need to consider the rights that are being sought by your publisher and whether or not you can give them the rights that they seek. So for example, excuse the text, but um, copyright is highly technical. Our act is 800 plus pages long. So to make sure that, we, um, that I, I hit all the points, I'm, I'm gonna give you some text. So things that you need to consider include, can you publish the article or a substantial part of the article, say rewritten into a chapter, um, in your book? So if you've, if you've created a thesis or um, you've published a thesis with publication, what rights do you retain in your own work? If an article can be included in the book, which version of the article will your publisher let you use? the tip, it's probably in your publishing agreement. 
So these grants might have already been, uh, sorry, these rights might have already been granted in the publishing agreement that you have with your journal publisher, um, or you might need to acquire these rights if you have transferred your copyright to your publisher. Um, or if you have undertaken a thesis as part of a commercial or as part of a, um, uh, an Australian grant, you may have signed a contract that, that um, has an impact on the rights that you have to reproduce and communicate your own thesis. So if you sign something, keep a copy, read it and understand what it means. If for some reason you don't have the rights to include a portion of your work in your book, um, you may be able to clear rights via a tool called RightsLink. It's run by the US Copyright Clearance Centre. It's a fantastic resource. Um, I'll let you Google that. And if not, you'll need to publish, uh, co sorry, contact your publisher to seek permission. The copyright, the creator of a work and the copyright owner, not normally the same person. And so if you've transferred your copyright or you've granted a publisher or another entity or an employer an exclusive license to publish, you'll need to seek permission before you can include that material in a book. And if you've used someone else's stuff, you'll also need to seek permission before you include that material in a book. So very quickly, I'm going to try not to kill you with the detail. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, if you're using other people's work in your thesis, you know, images, graphs, substantial block quotes of text, etc., cetera, um, or if you were relying on copyright exceptions to include third-party material in your thesis. You know, you didn't seek permission, you just went, yeah, that's probably research and study, or yeah, that's probably criticism and review, that'll be fine. You'll need to get permission um, to reproduce this material in a book. Once we move outside that university um, environment into a commercial publishing environment, the fair dealing provisions are less likely to be considered fair. And so the best way to manage the risk around publishing other people's material is to seek permission, is to get a license. The other thing you'll need to do, and I do this really early so there are no surprises, if you're working with a publisher on a book, is to ask them how they want you to go about clearing the rights. Some publishers, um, I can't think of a good example off the top of my head, but some publishers do have rights management departments. Ah, the World Health Organization, they're one. They have a rights management department, and so they have someone you can go to, to to clear rights or who can assist you. Other publishers, including most academic um, and scholarly publishers, will expect you to do all the legwork in terms of clearing your rights. You need to provide them with a, thesis, um, a book manuscript that is completely pre-cleared, including any content from articles you may have previously published and including uh, any third party material, other people's work that you've included. So always check with your book publisher about how they want you to go about clearing those rights. You also need to be aware of the rights that you've already granted to the university when you submitted your thesis, um, that you've already granted to a journal publisher if you're doing a thesis with publication, or to anyone else, and that was um, if you've signed a research agreement that has some bearing on on your uh, copyright and other intellectual property in your thesis. So something to be aware of if you are a student submitting your thesis to, for examination. Um, when you submit your thesis for, for examination and then um, the final version to the institutional repository, you will grant the university a non-exclusive licence to reproduce and communicate that thesis. You just need to be aware of that and Ideally, be having a conversation with your publisher about that. Now, in the, in the uh, when you submit your thesis, sorry, when you um, yeah, submit your thesis to the university library, to the university, the non-exclusive license granted also includes the right to convert thesis to any medium. Um, you may have already published and you may have, um, you may have granted a publisher 
a non-exclusive or an exclusive license or an assignment of copyright. You just need to be aware of all of these things. And again, tip, it's in your publishing agreement. So if anybody gives you anything to sign, we always read it before we sign it. Now, if that all sounded like I was speaking in another language, I would totally understand. Um, contract and copyright. So we, we're not just talking about copyright here, we're also talking about contract. And they interact with each other. And contract trumps copyright, um, to use a popular term at the moment. And these can be really complex and difficult issues to resolve. So we, my team and I, do recommend obtaining advice from a lawyer with expertise in copyright and publishing agreements. Now, once you're outside the university, don't despair. There are some spectacular resources such as Arts Law that have a free, um, a free legal service. This is a volunteer service, however, so you have to make sure you give them lots of lead time, but they can provide assistance once you're outside the University of Sydney. While you're at Sydney, um, we don't give legal advice, but my team and I run a copyright information service. And so my recommendation to any students considering publishing a book or even uh, a thesis by publication is to come and talk to us early to get a handle on the sort of rights management issues that will be specific to your thesis. So you can address these issues as you write and as you publish. So when you come to convert your thesis into a book down the track, um, it should be, most of the issues should already be resolved. If you're trying to manage rights uh, right as you submit your thesis or right as you submit your manuscript to your publisher, it's going to be really painful and you are going to lose your motivation. I'm so sorry. But if you start early, um, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be really onerous. If you start early and like anything in life, if you're organised, um, it'll probably be just fine. So I hope I haven't all put you off converting your thesis into a book with the mechanics of copyright. Um, but um, Minglu and I would be very happy to take your questions. Question for Dr Minglu Chen. Um, when it came to submitting your thesis, would you and you wanted to, and you were considering publishing, would you consider an open access um, level for your thesis in the library? I'm, I'm not sure whether I know the answer. I think probably also it depends on who you have in mind as your potential publisher. And every publishing house, every um, press, they have their different requirements. If you, it's probably at some stage, it's not entirely up to you to make it open access or not. So probably you hold on from making it open access until where you are more certain. Um, I just want some clarification. Um, you said to get in touch with a library copyright, copyright as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when would you recommend uh, we start this process? Okay, I should probably qualify as soon as possible. Good question. Um, I, I'd start, uh, I'd get in touch once you know or if you've decided either you want to convert your thesis into a book in the future uh, or you intend to uh, complete a thesis with publication and you intend to publish. And we could have an initial chat on, okay, well, what sort of rights do you need to clear um, in a bit more detail, where to go and how, practically how to do that. If you are intending to do a thesis with publication, um, your liaison librarian as well can help give some guidance around where, where's good to publish in your discipline in terms of maximising your impact and the, um, yeah, the impact and of your research. And then we can also kind of, we can also check those publishers' policies. So you might know up front, yes, I can just include the publisher's version of the article in my thesis and make it open access and that's totally fine. Or no, I need to, um, only use a version of my article in my thesis. But there are so many variables because every publisher has a slightly different um, policy. And so 
it's hard to give blanket advice. It's easier to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, the week before is a bit tough. Several months out is brilliant. Thanks, guys, for a great talk. Um, I guess this is to both of you, really. I know that predatory publishing is a big thing, and it's been a big thing for a long time now. Um, but I just know that so many PhD students get solicited um, to publish books. And I just wondered, I mean, sometimes it's very clear that the, the publisher is dodgy, but are there things to look out for that you would recommend? Probably at some stage in our academic career, we would already know who would be likely to publish this kind of work that we work on. That is, clues will be from the um, the references you use, the sources you quote, also from observing colleagues in the discipline and see where they publish. So I guess normally you, you would have a quite clear idea, but I, it also happened to me a few times, a publisher had contacted me, the name of which I have never heard of in my life. Um, I, but it's good to actually um, have a, a, a mentor or a mentor-like figure throughout your career, then you can always ask this person, your supervisor is quite often the person to check with. You can very frankly ask this um, question, I got an offer from so-and-so um, publisher, do you think, how re reliable do you think this publisher is? My supervisor told me this is after years after I graduated from the PhD, a few times, that it's going to be a waste of your time, so I didn't pursue. But sometimes you don't know, right? Polity, I never heard of polity for um, a while. Then all of a sudden, all my, a lot of distinguished colleagues that I know, they are all publishing their work in my discipline with polity. So this is always a learning process. It's always good to have a, a, a leading figure <laughs> that could guide you through it. So that's my part of the answer. Mm. It's, it's also, it's not just PhDs. So I think after I um, did my master's dissertation, I started getting, um, you know, dear Dr. Stanton, ha, I'm not a doctor. Um, <laughs> um, would you like to publish well, your dissertation with, I can't remember what the name of the publisher was, but um, I guess my advice would be, be very wary of an unsolicited offer to publish. Especially, yeah, you know your discipline, especially if it's a publisher that you've never heard of. Um, going to your supervisor is also is a really good idea. And also, if in doubt, uh, check with your academic liaison librarian. Uh, librarians are in the business of books and publishing too. And so there, yeah, and there are some resources that we can use to check. I just had another question. So, um, Minglu, I know from your experience that you were very fortunate when you were doing your PhD to already have some fairly reputable people approach you about publishing your book. Um, but I wondered whether you had any general tips for anyone. I know it's not speaking from your own experience, but perhaps from the experience of your colleagues. Um, let's say you haven't been approached by a reputable publisher. Are there any ways you would go about approaching a publisher that you were interested in publishing with? I guess then if nobody has offered any opportunities, I guess the next big thing that we will need to do is to write an a attractive book proposal. Now, how, to, how are you going to structure your book proposal? How to write it? Again, I guess depends on who would be the potential publisher, your strategies will, will vary. Then um, I, my experience, um, I haven't, I, when I published, I already had this manuscript, which was read by two um, scholars who, both of them had their own edited series, so they both offered to me. So I can't really advise on how how um, would be the best to, to write a very attractive book proposal. But again, I guess your colleagues in the department, supervisor, uh, associate supervisors, and also um, other colleagues, they would be very good source of information. I guess to get the first 
major piece of work out, it takes it can be a very lengthy process. Don't lose your motivation. Do don't lose your courage. It, at some stage, it does feel like it's never gonna end, but it does 